Um, on my way here, a woman stopped me for directions and asked, uh, before she asked me for directions, she said, do you speak English? <laughs> so apparently uh, she's not the only hairy Hispanic, right? I, I've never been asked that before. Despite all my attempts, I look like a bodega worker this evening, apparently, so doing great. Um, I got a call from my best friend today. He, uh, he was really upset. He confided in me that he's uh, having an extra marital affair. And uh, the most upsetting part to me was the fact that he used the word extramarital. <laughs> you know, that's, that sounds a little too positive to me, right? Like, sounds like extracurricular. Like, you're gonna put that on an application, right? Like, in addition to holy matrimony, I also excel at deception and slamming a sweet side piece. <laughs> and uh, I asked him, I was like, dude, aren't you worried about getting caught? Like, what if your wife checks your phone? And he was like, it's cool, man. I got the girl saved under a guy's name. I was like, your wife's gonna be cool with a 2 a.m. text from Dave saying, I want you inside me? <laughs> That's one progressive lady right there, huh? I think that'd be that really suck to have your uh, your spouse leave you for someone of the same sex, right? Like, uh, I know my wife will never leave me for a woman because uh, I cook, I clean, I pee sitting down. She might leave me for an actual man, but I'm all the woman she needs, you know? Like, I'm nailing it. Uh, but really, I like I picked out all the paint colors in our apartment. I arranged all the furniture. Still, when people come over, they're like, "Oh my god, this place is great. Must be nice to have a woman's touch around the home." I'm like, I don't even think she notices. <laughs> Very underappreciated. <laughs> a lot of guys hate their mother-in-laws, right? That's a real cliche thing. I adore my mother-in-law. She's great. She sends me inspirational quotes. She lets me borrow her car. She buys all my clothes. Like, if my wife and I ever got divorced, I love my kid, but I would fight for custody of my mother-in-law. <laughs> She's great. My son's awesome, but he never bought me deerskin slippers, you know? <laughs> I love those things. She also bought me not one, but two bathrobes. It's like, man, all this loungewear really just makes me want to lie around not supporting my family. Uh, her most recent gift to me was uh, in one package, she got me cologne and a pleather jacket. That sounds a weird message, right? It's like, hey, I know you're a family man now, but this will help if you ever want to go out and bang some Jersey trash. Have fun out there, kid. I, uh, I was raised a Jehovah's Witness, so if I look familiar, it's probably because you once slammed a door in my face. <laughs> right? People do not take kindly to us at all. Uh, I quit being a Jehovah's Witness the same year that Prince became a Jehovah's Witness. I might have stuck around a little longer if I knew we were going to get that endorsement, right? <laughs> That's pretty great. Jehovah must have been thrilled when Prince joined. He's like, oh man, so Scientologists think they're so cool with their Travoltas and their Tom Cruises. I got the purple one. Suck it, L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> right? But I had to get out of there because I couldn't handle all the, the knocking on doors. It was like horribly embarrassing. Uh, last door I ever knocked on, a kid from my high school answered the door and he was like, Doug, what are you doing here? I was too embarrassed to tell him the truth. So I was like, uh, I'm required by law to inform you that I'm a registered sex offender. <laughs> I'm going to prove it, you know. Uh, you guys are probably thinking this guy's kind of funny for a Civil War reenactor. I uh, dressed the elephant in the room. I've, I, uh, I've earned the right to look like this. I'm actually a direct descendant of Ulysses S. Grant. That is true. He's my great, great, great grandfather. I know you guys think that's cool. It sucks. Those are big shoes. To fill. It's a huge shadow to live under. He was, a, he was a decorated general who defeated the South, won the Civil War, right? I once spent an entire game of laser tag shooting the wrong team. <laughs> he went on to become president, face of the $50 bill, and I have to see his disapproving look every time I buy drugs. <laughs> Making the man proud. I have two adopted siblings. I have a uh, a uh, sister who's 14 years older than me, she's half Indian, and I have a brother who's 18 years older than me, he's half Japanese. So all of our photos together, I just look like I'm sitting with a team of doctors <laughs> as they try to find me a cure, right? But since they're so much older than me, I never got to break the news to them that they were adopted, which that like defeats the whole purpose of having adopted <laughs> siblings, right? Like, one time we got in a fight, I was like, guess what, you're adopted. They were like, guess what? Mom wanted us. <laughs> I 
Even my mom was like, point goes to the foreigners. <laughs> well played. Uh, fun fact about my dad, my dad has one eye. My dad lost his left eye in a barbecuing accident. That's the correct response, yes. Common mishap, right? <laughs> he, was, uh, he was flipping burgers with a two-prong barbecue fork and slipped out of his hand, popped him in the eye. That's it, I wish I had a better story, that's what happened. And uh, when I was able to, this happened before I was born, but I, when I was able to like kind of wrap my head around, I was like, Dad, how the hell did that happen? Were you drinking? He was like, nope, sober as a judge. I was like, you should probably tell people you were drinking. Right? What do you tell people? I'm just a bit of a butterfingers, right? He could, uh, at least if he was drinking, he would have the best story at the AA meeting, right? Just walk in there, just be like, oh, I think I finally hit rock bottom. This is a new low. He could never get away with saying typical dad stuff, you know, like, I got eyes in the back of my head. It's like, eh, maybe you should let the front of your head borrow one, huh? That's some thought. It's just sad. It all could have been avoided if he had just used a spatula, right? But as he likes to say, hindsight's 20, so... Uh, my grandfather died when I was eight years old. My parents made a huge mistake by telling me the truth, which is that he died in his sleep. So for the next year, I was awake. <laughs> Wide awake. I'd be like, Doug, it's bedtime. What's that, dead time? No thanks. <laughs> sleep when I'm dead. I'm dead if I sleep. Just gonna stay up, make a pot of coffee, cue up the exorcist. You guys knock yourselves out. They'd be like, all right, we'll see you in the morning. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I think they should have lied to me, right? I feel like would've, I would have been a great kid if I was like, how Grandpa died? They should have been like, well, he was uh, jumping on the bed <laughs> after lying about brushing his teeth and refusing to put his jammies on when he fell and broke his neck on a G.I. Joe he left lying around. <laughs> Doctors say would have survived if only he'd taken one more bite of broccoli. <laughs> would have been a good kid. Uh, it's tough to be a, a good parent, though, right? I have a, my son is eight months old now. Um, we'll see how it pans out. He was born. He was born. <laughs> he was born eight point two pounds, twenty one inches. Everyone wants to know the height and weight when you have a baby, right? Why are you gonna fight him? <laughs> oh. I feel like people hear that, they're like, 8.2, featherweight, huh? Give me a month, I'll drop down, beat his ass. <laughs> we don't do that with adults, you know, I'm like, this is my Uncle Dale, 5'1", 340 pounds. <laughs> Shit, big boy, healthy fella. Uh, it was a wonderful day that we found out we we're gonna have a baby. It's very, it's very empowering as a man to know that you can get a woman pregnant, you know? It's, uh, it's, it does wonders for your self-esteem. It's kind of like, for those of you who don't have kids, I would equate it to like winning a girl, one of those giant Rasta bananas at a state fair. You know, cause you're like, all right, I can do this. And then you do and you're like, what are we gonna do with this thing? <laughs> all right, but you gotta carry it around all afternoon. That's, that's all you. We had our son, we had our son uh, circumcised. We, we almost didn't, my wife didn't want to. She said, I don't think we should. Uncircumcised men have more sensation during sex. And that is one way to find out that your wife has banged a foreigner. <laughs> right? Holy shit. Sorry to put up with my snip tip mediocrity all these years. I found that, I was like, oh, this kid's getting circumcised, right? He's, he's already got loving grandparents, a college fund, no way he's having better sex than me too. That is, that is not fair. But that's also some serious future tripping, right? Like when the kid's five years old, he's like, why is mine different? We're gonna be like, well, your mom wanted to make sure you felt every stroke of every bit of strange you meet. <laughs> Get out there and have some fun, buddy. All right, that's gonna do it for me. You guys have been a lot of fun. Good night, thanks. Doug Smith.